The show opens up as a monk and a nun in Andalusia, Spain, zip open a bag to reveal the dead body of a young girl. The monk asks if the nun believes the girl is in hell, and the nurse replies it wouldn't matter as the girl was already in hell. After a while, the monk asks for the deceased's name, age, and cause of death so that he can record it. The nun reports the girl's name is Ava Silva and her age is 19. However, she refuses to give a cause of death. Suddenly, the monk receives a text message and tells the nun that he must attend to urgent matters. As the nun leaves, three women dressed in all black and armed with machine guns approach the church. Two of the women, Mary and Beatrice, carry their badly wounded leader, Shannon, and place her on a table. There are pieces of a substance called divinium inside her. According to the surgeon who arrives soon after, taking the pieces out could kill Shannon. The third woman, Lilith, insists there is a protocol for such situations. Although she doesn't say it out loud, she hints that they should allow their gravely wounded leader to die so that the focus can be shifted to the enemies who have followed them to the church. However, Mary is stubborn and refuses to give up on her friend. However, Shannon weakly grabs Mary's arm and tells her she will not make it. She then gives a medallion to Mary and instructs the surgeon to carry out the required procedure. In the meantime, explosions and gunfire continue in the distance as Beatrice reports that their enemies have broken through the first barricade. Alarmed, Lilith and the surgeon turn Shannon over while Mary comforts her dying friend. The surgeon pulls down Shannon's shirt to reveal a red, glowing circle called the Angle's Halo. Gathering her last breath, the leader tells Mary to keep it safe or all will be lost. She also ominously tells her close friend not to trust anyone. Next, the surgeon clamps a metallic device onto Shannon's back and removes the red-hot, glowing circle from her back. Awestruck, Mary tells Shannon that the halo is beautiful, only to find that she has died. Following this, the surgeon asks if Mary is the next bearer of the halo, but Mary says no and mentions Lilith before the door explodes. The surgeon carrying the halo tries to run out of the room with attackers shooting at her. As she runs, she trips and drops the halo, and an attacker tries to pick it up with his bare hands. The mystical artifact burns through the man's fingers, falling back on the floor as he screams in pain. Taking advantage, the surgeon uses the device to pick the halo back up and continues running, entering the room with Ava's body. She asks for Ava's forgiveness before inserting the halo into her back. As soon as she does so, the scarred flesh heals instantly after the halo enters the dead body. Meanwhile, an attacker sneaks up on the surgeon, and she beats him with her device. On the other hand, Ava's body begins to shake and convulse. Flashbacks of a different woman and Ava's time in the orphanage play, and she opens her eyes and screams. Through blurry vision, Ava can see the surgeon and her attacker fighting. She briefly checks over her limbs before looking over at the fight again just in time to see the attacker kill the surgeon. As she stands up on shaky legs, she sees a red cloud standing above the attacker. Just as he walks towards her, she picks up the device and hits the man. The man explodes into tiny pieces, and the red cloud screams and disappears. Following this, Ava exits the building while reflecting on what just happened. She walks through the streets, wondering if she has gone insane and if all of this is just a big hallucination. When a group of men approaches her, she backs up into the road, feeling nauseous. Suddenly, a bus hits her, sending the young girl flying towards the walls of a building. Ava seemingly passes through the walls, landing inside a football merchandise store. Dazed, she sits up and sees a massive gash in her leg healing right before her eyes. She then realizes she is in a clothing store and changes into a football team's merchandise. Back at the church, Mary and her group survive the battle. Their commanding officer, Father Vincent, arrives to check on the team. After a brief scan of the area, Mary and Beatrice tell him what happened in their operation. They were going to retrieve something but unexpectedly met more resistance than they had hoped. Following this surprising news, Father Vincent goes to the other room where Ava's body was placed before the attack. A resident priest of the church explains that the surgeon put the angel's halo inside the dead body of a girl named Ava, which then came back to life. This is completely new information for Father Vincent, but he notes that this turn of events may not be completely random. Meanwhile, Ava approaches her old orphanage, sneaks in, and heads to the old room she used to share with her roommate, Diego. Diego mistakes her for an angel before realizing who it is and exclaims joyfully that she is walking. However, he is confused that she's here as Ava had died the day before. Confused, Ava reveals that she has superpowers. Outside, Father Vincent walks with a nun towards Ava's old room, saying he is following up on an inquiry. He also asks for any information about her friends or other places she visited. But the nun tells him that Ava never left the building as she was a quadriplegic. Stunned, Father Vincent and the nun enter the room just to see Diego closing the blinds. The child lies by saying that he was simply looking at a bird. Outside the room, Father Vincent asks the nun how Ava got into the orphanage. The nun replies that she came there at seven years old, already a quadriplegic, 
Ava's father was unknown, and no other family could be found, while her mother was killed in the same accident that caused her disability. Next, Father Vincent states that he has one more question, and asks the nun how the young girl died. The scene shifts to the following day as Ava stands in the sun by the beach, remarking that she is exhausted, but she cannot go to sleep. Spotting a pool, she heads over, believing that cold water would wake her up. However, just as she jumps into the pool, she realizes she cannot swim and begins to drown. Fortunately, a random boy jumps into the pool and helps her towards the shallow end. He introduces himself as JC, and Ava replies that she is hungry before revealing her real name. Following this, JC gets Ava some food, which she very enthusiastically eats. Meanwhile, three individuals enter the gates of the residence, where the pool is and approach the duo. JC introduces them as his friends, Chanel, Zori, and Randall. All three of them view Ava with suspicion. Meanwhile, Mary reports back to Father Vincent at their secret headquarters, a convent. She brings him photos of Ava from the security cameras of the church. After examining the images, Father Vincent asks Mary to distribute them to all the churches in Andalusia so that they can locate the young girl quickly. On the other hand, Mary wants answers to their failed mission earlier. In response, Vincent says he doesn't know who they're up against or how they knew the method to kill a warrior nun like Shannon. He then entrusts Mary to find Ava because both Lilith and Beatrice are flawed by personal gain from such a mission. He knows that they need to retrieve the halo before their enemies can at whatever price necessary. Elsewhere, JC asks Ava to walk by the beach so they can talk in private. He comes clean to her and reveals that they're opportunists. They know the actual owner of the mansion stays in Saudi Arabia, so they use the mansion and just get it cleaned before the owner gets back. Puzzled but excited, Ava asks him if she could tag along with them, and JC gladly agrees. That night, Ava attends her first rave party with her new friends. She finds it spectacular and even indulges herself in JC's party drugs. Back at the convent, Mary continues to mourn the loss of Shannon. She reminisces about the time when Shannon confessed her love for Mary. Although she didn't realize it at the time, she regrets not telling Shannon her true feelings as well. On the other hand, Ava again sees the mysterious red smoke at the rave party and decides to follow it. She sees the smoke take the form of some kind of demon, feasting on the souls of the two unconscious people, probably dead due to drug overdose. Frightened, she runs back to JC, and they leave the party immediately, so Ava would feel safe. While this is happening, Father Vincent goes to a bar to take his mind off things. There, a bartender offers to listen to his problems. As the priest opens up about the existence of evil creatures, we see a scene from the church where Ava's dead body was taken. A demon is looking for the angel's halo that was supposed to be on the back of Shannon's dead body. The beast kills the priest and slashes the back of the corpse, searching for the magical artifact. But it is too late, as the halo is safe inside Ava's body. In the next scene, Mary returns to their base convent after examining the docks of Malaga. She wants to focus on the mercenaries who killed Shannon. However, Lilith focuses on retrieving Halo, causing heavy arguments between the two. Father Vincent intervenes in the back and forth trash talking and tells the girls to follow him to the church. Upon their arrival, they see Shannon's dead body desecrated by the demon. Horrified, Vincent tells everyone they have a new enemy, a Tarask. Unlike other demons named Wraiths, Tarasks are beasts of hell that can inflict physical damage. After this short visit, Beatrice starts researching the Tarask at their base convent. Based on the ancient texts, these demons can only appear in the real world briefly. However, they have a history of always being able to track down the Halo Bearer. She also finds that only the Halo Bearer armed with a Divinium Sword can kill the Tarask. Alarmed, the warrior nun asks Vincent what would happen if the beast gets its hand on the Halo. Suddenly, the Cardinal of the Catholic Church, Francesco Doretti, answers the question for Beatrice, heaven will fall while hell rises. After Beatrice leaves the room, the Cardinal warns Vincent that he has until the next day to give the halo to Lilith, or he may lose his job. That night, Ava and her new group of friends head over to Arc Tech, a company which manufactures innovative cybernetics and technology for a prestigious hi-fi party. Ava loses her mind with excitement as they enter the company's premises. She read an article about the head of innovations at Arc Tech, Dr. Jillian Salvius, reporting that she helps people move stuff using their minds. As JC and Ava enter the main hall, she immediately sees Cardinal Doretti. Doretti also sees her, but he doesn't seem to be aware that she's the current holder of the halo. However, his ring glows a bright blue hue. It appears to be reacting when near the halo bearer. On the other hand, the Cardinal meets Christian, Dr. Salvius' assistant, who used to be a Vatican archivist. Christian chose to follow the path of science after spending 30 years with the Catholic Church. Out of everyone's sight, JC and Ava make their way into the labs of Arc Tech. While they're inside the experimental area, Dr. Salvius hosts a presentation outside. 
At the same time, Mary arrives at Arc Tech just as JC lets the rest of their group inside the labs. Meanwhile, Dr. Salvius addresses the crowd and reveals she can stabilize the Higgs field for a full minute. At the sight of the machine, Cardinal Doretti immediately knows it's made up of divinium, a metal which has been a highly guarded secret of the church for centuries. On the stage, Dr. Salvius powers up her device and unveils the world's first quantum portal, a device that allows humans to transport between dimensions instantly. After the presentation, Dr. Salvius confronts Cardinal Doretti on where he stands on quantum portals. However, he replies the mysterious metal must be returned to the church to safeguard it from people who want to use it for personal gain. At the convent, Camilla and Beatrice track Ava down using the National Police Facial Recognition System. They got a hit on a CCTV camera, so they traced her location and followed her. Father Vincent doesn't want to give the halo to Lilith as he thinks Ava has been chosen to become the new halo bearer. Back at Arc Tech, a man confronts Christian while Mary eavesdrops on their conversation. He tells Christian that he lost many of his men during their failed mission the other night. However, the assistant calls for security to escort the man out before he confronts Dr. Salvius. Meanwhile, one of Ava's new friends, Randall, informs JC that Dr. Salvius has entered the lab. JC sees the message and quickly leaves with the new girl. While leaving, Ava sees a kid being held inside one of the lab rooms. Suddenly, she gets a hunch that the kid may be connected to her past. Leaving JC, locked out of the door, she returns to the room only to find that the kid is already gone. Determined, she tries to get inside the room, but the alarms go off when she opens the door. The guards immediately chase after Ava and eventually corner her. At the exact moment, a ghostly figure appears behind, out of the wall, which scares the guards away. Ava turns around to look at the ghostly figure, the Tarask. Terrified, she screams as she runs and hides inside a lab room. Fortunately, Father Vincent and the Warrior Sisters arrive and shoot the Tarask, but their bullets barely even disturb the beast. Suddenly, Ava grabs the Divinium Shield she saw earlier and hits the demon, pushing it back to hell. Following this, the young girl tries to leave the building immediately, but Beatrice tranquilizes her. They then tied her up and take Ava with them back to their base. When Ava wakes up in the convent, Lilith and Beatrice talk about her. She is confused and frightened and the halo reacts to her emotions. It causes Ava to levitate even while cuffed to the bed, and in a blink of an eye, frees her. Alarmed, Beatrice tells the bearer to calm down, but a large blast sets off from Ava as a defensive mechanism. The shockwave sends Lilith and Beatrice flying and knocks the clueless girl unconscious. Later, Father Vincent comforts the now conscious Ava by telling her the story of a legendary female warrior, Ariela of Cordoba. Ariela was orphaned at a very young age and didn't have any purpose until she found God. After that, the warrior decided to fight for God until she was killed in battle one day. However, an angel named Adriel came down from the heavens and gave his halo to save her. This incident started their group, the Order of the Cruciform Sword. Father Vincent then reveals that they are a group of devout women tasked with keeping the ancient evil at bay. Furthermore, whoever bears the halo is the chosen champion of God, the warrior nun. Despite this information, the young girl says she is not ready for any commitment. But Father Vincent prohibits her from leaving the monastery and pushes her to train with other sisters. Meanwhile at the headquarters of Arc Tech, Dr. Salvius and Kristen see the security footage of the Divinium Shield reacting to Ava the moment she entered the lab. They now plan to search for the mysterious girl in the footage. On the other hand, Father Vincent tells the Cardinal that Ava is currently undergoing training within the Order. Cardinal Doretti gives Father Vincent one chance for both him and Ava. If they fail, Lilith gets the halo, which may kill Ava. Later that afternoon, Lilith arrives to engage Ava in a sparring session under the watchful eyes of the head of combats, Mother Superior. After a few initial hits, the hits just go through Ava, making her upper body impervious to physical attacks. This, along with Ava's free spirit attitude, pisses Lilith off. As a result, she snaps and tries to hit Ava in the face, but Mother Superior stops her. In the following scene, Father Vincent continues Ava's training by making her read the history of the Order. For Vincent, God gave Ava a second chance at life, and it was her choice to either take it or not. Elsewhere, JC and his friends find a new place to crash. They enter a beach house only to be greeted by Dr. Salvius and her men. Alarmed, the youngsters try to run, but the guards have already surrounded them. Salvius then tells them she's looking for their friend. Overcome by the moment's pressure, one of the girls accidentally slips out Ava's name. However, JC tells the doctor that Ava isn't part of their group and they just met her a few days ago. Surprisingly, Salvius lets them off the hook, but she gives them her number and tells them to call her when Ava contacts them. 
Back at the convent, Ava goes to see Lilith for weapons training. There, she sees a divinium sword for the first time. The mystical sword starts to glow as soon as she enters the room. Without wasting further time, Lilith takes the sword and slits Ava's right bicep. She reminds the new girl that not even the warrior nun is immune to divinium. All of a sudden, they hear a demon growling in the distance. Alarmed, Lilith throws the sword towards Ava, but the new girl panics. She then runs as fast as she can towards the wall, passing through it, instead of appearing entirely on the other side. Her leg gets stuck inside the wall. At the same time, Lilith arrives in the room, where Mother Superior is also observing Ava. It is revealed that there was no demon attack in reality, and this was simply a test. Disappointed, Mother Superior announces Ava isn't cut out to be a warrior nun. She scolds her, revealing that Ava killed herself before being resurrected. Disregarding the new girl's feelings, the head of combats points out that Ava knew she wouldn't survive the real world, so she decided to kill herself. This relentless personal attack breaks Ava down as she begins to sob. Luckily, Father Vincent arrives to stop their argument. That night, Ava tells Beatrice she didn't kill herself. When asked if she remembers anything about the night, she recalls it was just like any other night. She was watching television, and then she fell asleep. On the other hand, Beatrice tells Ava about her past, how her parents were politicians who shipped her off to a Catholic boarding school. By the end of their conversation, the two have started to develop a friendship. The following day, Ava goes to Father Vincent's office, where he is talking to Mary. The rogue sister tells Vincent someone assassinated Shannon for a reason. But as the new girl enters the office, Mary introduces herself and leaves. In the final scene, Vincent and Ava continue their history lessons. The new girl learns that the Tarask mortally wounded Ariela, so the first bearer of the halo called for the next in line. But their lesson is interrupted by a nun who asks Father Vincent to sign some paperwork. As Father Vincent talks with the nun, Ava runs away from the monastery, passing through the room's walls. She leaves her protective vest with a note that reads, I want to live. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.